Welcome back to Leafy Life. I'm Susie and this channel is my space to share my love of houseplants. In this house I am tending to leafy life Reaching green and bending toward the light Leafy life This is my leafy life So today I want to share with you a few um, lovely planty, woodsy, tree-ish kind of picture books um, just ones that I have discovered recently and been appreciating both myself and with my kids. So it's possible that not everyone will agree with me, but I strongly believe that picture books are for everyone of all ages. I will always love picture books. I think they are a wonderful, um, just a wonderful way to appreciate artwork. Um, and yeah, just words and pictures together. That's my favorite thing apart from plants. Um, but yeah, I think it's easy for people to, to dismiss picture books as a childish thing. Um, and yeah, they're just not, they're just, they're made by adults and they are made for adults to appreciate with their children. Most picture books are going to be read by adults to children. And that is not just for the children to enjoy. It's, it's for the adults and the children together. And it's a whole experience, but that you don't even have to have children to appreciate picture books. Um, I was, I was a full on appreciator of picture books years before I ever thought I would have kids. And, um, yeah, I, I will always appreciate picture books even my, when my kids are grown up. So, um, I just wanted to encourage everybody to, to just pick some up, go and look at the ones that you loved when you were little, discover what's new now and being published and put out into the world now. Um, I think, yeah, all four of these books that I'm going to share with you are quite recently published in the last few years or, or this year. Um, and yeah, there's just, there's just a wealth of wonderful creativity out there. Um, wonderful, talented people, people who absolutely know what they're doing with words and pictures and people who know, how to put them together in the most beautiful package. Um, yeah, I love pitch books <laughs> so much. So I've just had a lovely cozy cup of tea. Today started out beautifully sunny, just one of those gorgeous November sunshiny days. And now it's got all cloudy, but it's still, it's still really bright and lovely. And yeah, I'm just enjoying being at home and being cozy and going gently and slowly today. And, um, I've made the house all nice, um, it's nearly the weekend, uh, we have a visitor for the weekend and I'm just feeling really comfy and cosy and I want to just sit here and look at some gorgeous books so um, if you've got a minute just get yourself a nice hot drink or whatever you would enjoy and get comfy and relax and I'll show you these beautiful beautiful books. Now that I've got all comfy here I, I feel like I could just have a little doze but I shall resist. Um, so I have four books to share with you today and um, as I said they're all on a kind of growth leafy theme, um, all very green and lovely um, and um, yeah I hope that you like them, I hope you discover something new to enjoy yourself or share with your family um, or give us a gift. Um, so um, as a sort of budget consideration I wanted to remind you that libraries are there and they are brilliant. Um, I used to work in a library for quite a few years and it was just lovely to um, just serve the community and find books for people and yeah get books into people's hands it's a it's a joy and a privilege um, but yeah one practical thing to remind you of is that you don't have to buy these books to appreciate them you can go and borrow them from your library and if they don't have them on their shelves fear not they can do a search um, yeah just ask at the desk and they will be happy to to search out um, whatever title you ask for and hopefully they might have it in another library in that um you know in that county or that district or whatever um and actually for young people usually under 16s um can just reserve books from another library for free so they will order it in from another library it will arrive and they will give you a message to say that it's there and then you just borrow it as usual um in in my county i think it's a pound or has it gone up to two pounds 
I will have to check because I haven't done it recently, but it's still it, just um, a really good, um, affordable way to access a book, especially if you don't know if you want to actually keep it. It's a good way to try a title and um, you can always add it to a wish list later. Um, but yeah, it's a good way to access books and try things out. And I hope that you will think about trying that. If you haven't joined your local library, I do urge you to go and give it a go. It's it's free and it's it's usually pretty quick and easy. Um, and yeah, it's not just that one library that you can then use. You can use any of the libraries within that, you know, district, borough, county, whatever it is, wherever you live. Um, and it just opens up so many opportunities, so much to explore. So just hop along and ask and get going. So the first book I want to share with you, which is actually the reason for this video in the first place, is The Extraordinary Gardener by Sam Broughton. This is published by Tate. This is a hardback, but it should be available as a paperback easily now because this is a few years old. Um, we were given this, um, my son was given this when he was just a toddler and we've yeah, we've been enjoying it for, for years and we've read it lots of times. We're still reading it now, read it the other day. Um, it's not just me that chooses to, to read this one. Um, my son pulls this off the shelf quite regularly when he's in the mood for it. And it's beautiful. I love I love the loose kind of slightly scribbly artwork. It's just full of life. Um, it's a very beautifully green and colourful book. And um, yeah, it's just lovely. I know everyone has their own kind of taste and cup of tea when it comes to artwork. Um, I don't have one set style that I appreciate but I do I do really love loose um loose artwork where there's kind of like really relaxed lines your eyes can just follow the kind of just lively flow of all the shapes and lines around around the pages um yeah I just really really love this book and I'm going to tell you a bit more about it so it follows the story of this little boy, Joe, who is very sweet. He's got a really wild and active, lively imagination and he loves to grow things. And it just follows his journey of learning to grow things from scratch and how that um, how that just absolutely takes off and how he shares it with the people around him. So I'm going to show you a page um, that I really love where he is sharing it with everyone let me just find it i could have bookmarked this but never mind um oh my goodness there's just so much loveliness in this book um yeah this is the page i wanted to show you so this is when he is um taking his plants out into the world um and just putting them into the hands of people that he doesn't know and just sharing his love of growing things it's really lovely i love the variety of different people that he's gone out to see and it just reminds us reminds me of you know how how lovely it feels to share things that you've been growing and um if you've had success with something like giving cuttings to friends or putting something up for somebody if you think that they'd like it and just kind of yeah it just expands and grows with with more people i have to show you this page next because if you weren't won over by this book already i think this is just gonna swing it isn't this gorgeous this lovely block of flats has become this amazing rich jungle of, of plants this is a, a page that's absolutely lovely to browse for ages my son and i have had lots of kind of games come from this book actually where um you know when we should be settling down for sleepy time um we've we've just had chats about the people and the plants we've asked each other what our favorite plants are we've talked about the different shapes and we've just had really nice kind of what's the word we've, we've just kind of soaked in it and just spread out on the floor and just really gazed into it looked at all the details we've done you know spot this spot that there's just um it just kind of warrants a lot of time and going slowly and appreciating it and yeah it's it's just a lovely place to rest your eyes i wish that i could read this book to you but yeah it would be against all the commissions and copyright kind of stuff but i'm just going to show you a few more pages to flip through so you get a little bit of a feel for it And that's your lot. Next we have Bloom by Anne Booth and illustrated by Robin Wilson-Owen. 
um, and it's published by Tiny Owl, which is a publisher I did not know before. I didn't know the author or illustrator either. Um, discovered this one recently at our local library um, a few months ago, and I've just recently borrowed it again. Um, I requested um, this one to come in actually from another library, and yeah, it's beautiful. Again, a lot of lovely, lovely colour, um, lovely illustrations. I will show you one inside right now. <clears throat> So the story shows us this beautiful flower and how it's impacted by um, two very different people and how they look at the world and themselves and other people and how their um, positive and negative behaviour affects the growth of this gorgeous flower. Um, and yeah, it's really lovely. I think that um, there are a lot of people out there who talk to their plants and um, may believe that, um, you know, that has, a, has an impact and um, it can have um, a really lovely impact on your own self anyway to talk to talk to the things that you're nurturing um I certainly talk to the gerbils a lot when I'm giving them their food <laughs> but I do I do talk to my plants um sometimes when I'm watering them I apologize if they've got too dry <laughs> I tell them how beautiful they are not because I believe it's going to actually impact them but it, it's just a part of how I'm interacting with them but but I know there have been um you know Oh, have you seen the episode of The Good Life when um, Barbara Good is, um, she's doing an experiment with some beans, isn't she? And she she's really mean to some beans and then she's really, really kind and loving to some beans. And then I think there are some beans that she doesn't talk to at all. Um, and she wants to sort of see how, um, yeah, how that impacts their growth. So whether you believe in that or not is not for me to give a judgment call on, but um, this story just explores, um, yeah, just the impact of, of positive words. And I think you can take a lot from this for how we talk to talk to the people around us, our children, our, our people in our relationships in life, you know, everywhere. Um, just the just the wonderful impact of encouragement instead of putting people down and choosing our words carefully and, you know, focusing on the right things that we want to um, dwell on and... Um, kind of um give attention to and that is that's not to say to pretend that there's nothing bad or difficult that needs addressing but just that you know that there's a time and a place for, for the serious stuff or for criticism and that it can be done in um i'm going off on a bit of a tangent but i really went waffling on there um but what i really mean to say is it's just a lovely reminder of the impact of our choice of words in life and how it can how our words can either encourage people or bring them down and that to be aware of that is a really important thing <laughs>
this is my coffee plant. Well, our coffee plant. Well, my husband's coffee plant. <laughs> He's the coffee lover. Um, it's so healthy and beautiful and it sits here in our hot drink making area and it's just gorgeous. It doesn't cause any issues. It's just lovely. It doesn't seem to complain about anything. Um, and I love it. It's beautiful and glossy when it puts out new leaves. In fact, it's glossy all the time. Um, but yeah, the um, the vibrant green of the newer leaves is just lovely. These are fairly recent. These were popping out over the over the kind of late summer. These ones you can see my tea time chart. <laughs> um, so that was given to me by a dear friend who knows how much I love tea, and it was sent as a postcard. And um, I popped it up here in my hot drink making area because when friends come and I I just I can't remember their their tea preferences um in terms of amount of milk um I have barely any milk um but my friend Lizzie who gave me this has has oceans of milk um and it's hard to believe that she likes it like that when I really like it the opposite way so I have now marked it on here so gradually as friends have come since I've had this postcard I've been checking with them and they've told me which which color they are which color they prefer and I've marked their name on there with an arrow so that I can just glance at that when I'm making hot drinks and I know it will be a nice cup of tea I know that a lot of us are very polite not me and they say oh as it comes and that phrase about hot drinks as it comes is like well as it comes is how I make it for me and no one will like tea like that or hardly anyone would like tea like that because it's it's very very dark um it's not that it's over brewed or stewed or anything like that or ridiculously strong I just don't like a lot of milk um so it's dark um but yeah um I think that sort of as it comes probably assumes that you're adding at least a decent amount of milk. <laughs> so if I was to make what I would consider normal tea, I guess I'd give it a good slosh of milk, but not make it um, quite how Lizzie likes it, which is basically half and half milk and tea. So, um, yeah, I just thought I'd show you that. It's a happy little place, this corner, because beautiful plant and yeah, all the things you need for lovely hot drinks. I do also have a tea plant. This is a camellia, is it sinensis? I will check and put it on screen if I'm wrong. Um, there we go, let's give it a bit of light. Um, it's not actually a dark corner, but the camera is struggling because of the bright light outside. Um, so this, it is getting a bit leggy. It could probably do with another prune. I got this from a local garden centre a few months ago and it came with some freebies in the soil which have been living happily there. Um, and I've just let them be. There's a little new new uncoiling fern frond there um beautiful sticky traps as ever um but yeah i just i really wanted to have this over in the the tea making corner but it is too big for it um so it lives over here instead so i thought i'd just show you that because it's lovely so people really don't believe that this is the amount of milk i like and there we go Flip. Perfecto. The sun has just come out and um, decided it's time to pick a posy. It's November, but there are salvias about. <laughs> I planted a load of lovely perennials in this bed here. Um, just this whole swathe here. Um, and in the spring, I completely weeded it out um it was utterly utterly tidy um yeah planted in some beautiful perennials lots of salvias for the bees and butterflies and then i kind of just left it <laughs> um so the salvias have now completely taken off but the entire summer um this bed has just been full of massive weeds and i've done nothing about it i've just let it be um our flower bed over there is not really a flower bed it's a wilderness patch so we've put nettles and we've just let things do whatever they want really um but yeah it's lovely that now despite having had a really really weedy messy summer flower bed we now have a beautiful autumnal load of 
flowers <laughs> um, to enjoy and I've been enjoying looking out at them from the house but um, as I said we have a visitor this this weekend um, so yeah my mother-in-law is coming to visit and um, so I'm gonna pick a posy for her room as a little welcome um, and I thought I'd show you the beautiful flowers as well especially having just showed you the beautiful picture book bloom it's nice to see some lovely lovely colorful petals out here up happily every year. I'll try and show you the flower. Comes in white too. Very very hairy buds. Really nice to plant from seed. And yeah lovely perennial. I was about to pick this stem but it's already home to someone. Little crab spider clinging on in the breeze. He was actually sheltering inside that tiny bit. Let's see if he goes back in in a minute maybe. A shelter from the rain Mr Spider. I'm gonna go back in. Oh, there's a great little house for you. I'm glad I didn't cut that one. <laughs> little petal cave. Adorable. He is so cosy. That's okay. I'll find another one. Enjoy your day. than enough pests to be dealing with so I was just taking my time and also just enjoying being at the sink and messing about with water.
well that was a lovely bit of splashy fun and now I get to arrange all these beautiful things and give them a drink so first I have a bit of foliage. This is part of a trailey plant that has purple flowers. They're not in flower at the moment, but I just love the, the shape of the leaves. Um, I feel like I do know its name, but I have forgotten. So if I manage to find out, I'll put the name on screen for you. Um, this was given kindly by a good friend um, from her woodland, and um, she advised me to put it in a pot um, because... Um, it likes to rampage around the garden so yeah it's now contained safely and can't spread beyond beyond the walls of that pot <clears throat> i have three of these to be honest for my for my eyes they are just perfect on their own <laughs> i love to have um vases of of just leafy stems from the garden around the house and before I had so many um house plants actually I was doing that fairly regularly just so I had some fresh greenery around the house and yeah if you feel like you're um on a bit of a plant buying budget but you have a garden do consider just getting um getting some scissors and snipping a few little stems of leaves um even things that are free and growing not wild not wild flowers obviously but a little bit of goose grass i mean no one's going to miss that from the hedgerows and that looks beautiful in in a vase and lasts a little while and yeah it's just rather lovely anyway onwards um so this is one of the salvias and um, I don't know all their individual names, but I love how this one is actually, this one's finished flowering. Uh, this is one that's still got some, some flowers attached to it. So you can see they come out of these little sheaths um, and even though it's finished flowering, it still looks like a flower. I think it's really gorgeous with these deep purple um, sheaths and I like the texture of the sort of veiny um, sort of ridges and how it's kind of pale green at the at the junction there you can see the light coming through it's just really lovely so that's going in I made sure that I chose one with no spiders living in there um there's another little one of those Plop. And then a similar one. No, is that the same? Yeah, no, that's actually a different one. Um, so you saw the bushes outside. So it's very similar with the, the structure of the um, the sheathy bits or whatever you call them. So that one's still in flower. And then I've got a little bit more foliage here. Again, I don't know this one's name, but it's just a little shrub that we've got out in the garden. I gave this one a really thorough clean because um, I really didn't want anything to be hiding amongst the tiny leaves. It's variegated and lovely. Then we have this salvia with the really, really fluorescent red tips of the petals, which contrasts beautifully with the white there as well. I don't think it's going to focus for me. Is it? No. It's really lovely. I like the leaves on this one too. And I love the, the vibrant green. And last of all, a little bit of fuchsia, which is about to open up and looking very lovely. I don't know what this will be like inside. But um, we shall see. I'm going to take off a few of the lower leaves, actually. Oh, look, there's a tiny little bud down there. Oh, no, it's not a bud. I think it's actually the a, a spent flower. So I guess that's where the seeds will be um, developing in there. That'll look nice at the front because it's got such droopy flowers. There we go. I'm just going to tinker with this for a minute.
just been and done a load of things in between books. Um, needed a cup of tea, made some coffee for my husband who works from home, um, had snacks, went out into the garden. <laughs> ah, um, but back to the books, all cosy and comfy again. It's actually, it's lashing down with rain now, so I'm really glad it went out when I did and got some fresh air and sunshine. Um, I'm going to save that one for last. Right, so next is Orchid Ghosts. No. <laughs> ah, ghost Orchid. <laughs> ah, dear. So this one is written and illustrated by Fiona Lumbers. Um, I've just realised from holding it like this, I've realised why this looked so familiar to me and it's because I um, enjoyed a book by the same author illustrator um, probably a year or more ago with my son, this one here, Clement Crab. Really, really adorable. I recommend that one as well. Um, but yeah, this one is new to me. I um, Again, it's a library book. I got it out this, this last visit to the library last week. Um, and I chose it myself because um, sometimes the kids are so excited about other things that are going on in the library, like library trails, toys, puzzles, colouring, all sorts of things. Um, and so I end up having a good old rifle through the books myself while they're while they're playing. And I found this and it was just jumped out at me. Um, I do love orchids. I have a few orchids, although none of them are currently in flower. They are all in limbo land um, on our bathroom cabinet where I have... I've sort of turned it into a little orchid rehab shelf. It, I think it gets enough light and um, yeah, they've had their um, had their stems um, sorted out. So I'm just waiting to see if they will flower again. But yeah, just um, I do love orchids. Um, so this this is a lovely book because it's um, it's all about the search for a, a rare orchid in the wild. So this little girl um, is the daughter of two explorers um, and it's beautiful. It just follows her journey with them to set out to photograph these ghost orchids in the wild. And um, they are elusive and obviously only flower um, for a short amount of time. Um, but along the way, there's so many beautiful things to explore and being being a small person she wants to stop and appreciate everything and her parents are on a bit of a mission and um yeah it's just about finding um the attention for all the beautiful things around us really um and it's got gorgeous gorgeous illustrations um there's one of along the way I do I really like this picture and I think a lot of you will like this one because um I love hammocks and they are sleeping in hammocks in a bit of deserty cactus area. Do you like the uh, moth on the dad's nose there? The sun has just come out really brightly. It's such a day of contrasts. It's just, it keeps going between dark skies and bright sunshine. Um, so the lighting keeps changing in here. <laughs> um, so I hope you can see okay. Um, but yes, I thoroughly recommend this book. If you like orchids, if you like flowers, if you like adventures and exploring, it's a great story and it's beautiful illustrations. And um, yeah, it's right up my street. So... The last one, I think I'm going to sit up and show you this book uh, with a bit more space around me because um, it's quite big and it has flaps. This is Mouse's Wood and it is by Alice Malvin, uh, published by Thames and Hudson. This is a hardback version. I don't know if it will come out in paperback. Um, I'm just going to check when it was published actually because it's quite new. Um, so unbelievably, I found this in a charity shop for a pound, which is crazy, um, 2022. Yeah, so it came out last year. It is a really beautifully produced book, um, gorgeously printed. Um, it's just a really quality product and the artwork is gorgeous. So Alice Melvin is um, an illustrator based in Scotland. She's someone that we have a few books of already. We have Counting Birds, so go check that one out. We have had that one for a, a few years. It's beautiful. Um, 
and she also produced um, a lovely swim diary. She's a wild swimmer. She regularly swims in the sea, um, even when it's cold. And um, she produced this lovely booklet that um, showed her, her sketches of the beach each time she was swimming um, and sort of the changing weather and view. And um, she's also really open about mental health and how swimming has helped her and how it can help other people. Um, and I believe proceeds of that book were helping with a particular charity. I will check that. Anyway, so yes, go check out Alice Melvin. Um, I'll put up links in the in the description for you. Um, so I am going to show you inside this gorgeous book. I'm just going to read to you from the back. Um, Mouse is going on a journey through the woods and plans to visit his many woodland friends and relish the changing of the seasons along the way. Join in by lifting flaps to peep into the woodland creatures' homes and see if you can spot the first signs of spring, summer, autumn and winter. Use Mouse's nature calendar to discover the birds, insects, animals and plants living in harmony with the changing seasons. So that is a very good, accurate description of the book. It basically goes through, um, Mouse is having a little walk through the woods and he stops off at his friend's homes and I will show you some of the pages and you get to see inside the homes because they're, they are flappy, flappy pages. And um, yeah, the details are just beautiful. If you are someone that likes Brambley Hedge, if you've heard of Brambley Hedge, um, I think you will love this book. If you haven't heard of Brambley Hedge, you must go check it out. It's just a joy. Um, but um yeah, let's get inside. Firstly, it has these gorgeous end papers filled with all sorts of different wild birds. And it has a map, as all the best books should have. So beautiful. So you can see all of the little houses and homes and descriptions of where they live. October comes and dusk descends, the bluster strips the trees, we chase and chatter, speed and scatter, kicking up the leaves. So we're just into November now but I had to show you the October page because it was so full of gorgeous rusty leaves. Um, autumn is my favourite time of the month so time of the year rather. <laughs> um, yeah October into November this this precise moment of the year actually is just just glorious isn't it before all the leaves are off the trees it's just so beautiful um so yeah mouse has um come across squirrel's home she lives in this beautiful pine tree she even has a swing from her tree a lovely tree house and um she has a lot of instruments in her home i'm gonna zoom in for you so yeah very cozy and lovely i love how she's just stuffed it full of instruments a little accordion up there on the shelf and a tambourine guitar and violin and is this a lute oh she has a metronome as well that's amazing and um a little record player and there's her stand of music mm -hmm. it's very lovely squirrels are one of my favorite favorite animals maybe because they live up trees. I love the way they scamper up trees when they kind of spiral around the trunks and scamper and they just make it look so easy and um, they're very cute as well. It is very hard to narrow down which pages to show you but um, this is another absolute favourite because of the greenhouse and badger. Um, so there we go, there's his lovely, lovely greenhouse with his um, vine of grapes growing and tomatoes. And they're busy harvesting gorgeous things. I'll show you the whole page properly. The wood is at its warmest in the middle of July. The river is refreshing when the sun is hot and high. So this is July's page and um, this is an absolute favourite. It has many of my favourite delightful things in the world. It has a hammock. It's on a river, it has boats, it has a lovely weeping willow, in fact, more than one weeping willow. Um, and yeah, it's just wonderful. And the flap, there are actually two flaps on this page, so I'll show you inside the house first. Oops. I love the bed up in the, up in the eaves there with the drawers underneath. <laughs> the stairs 
with the little chest of drawers under there. <laughs> and then there's another flap, which I didn't actually notice the first time I looked at this book. But look at that, showing you all under the under the water level, fish and snails, and dabbling ducks and a coot. And mouse going for a swim. Otter in his little rowing boat. Doesn't that just look like the loveliest day? A lovely day in May by the riverbank. At the back of the book there is a year in the wood and it goes through all the months of the year telling you which things to look out for and um, yeah it's a really nice thing to read through um, and learn a bit about what to what to spot and what things will be growing and what's happening in the in the natural world in that month. I was very delighted to find this book because um, it had actually been kind of on a wish list. I had seen it come out, I must have seen it on Facebook or something, and thought, oh my goodness, Alice Melvin, that is a book that is totally, totally my cup of tea, and I will be needing that book in my life. Um, and then didn't buy it straight away because um, lots of reasons, probably. Um, but yeah, the fact that I found this second hand is kind of crazy because I can't imagine anyone wanting to not have this book once they once they own it but um maybe it was just given to the wrong person who knows um or maybe they didn't have space maybe they're leaving the country who knows <laughs> but um but yeah it's a book that I will definitely buy for other people and spread the love because I know lots of people who would absolutely adore this book and it'll make a great present and it's the kind of book that you can just go back to and soak up the details. The story itself is really lovely. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's just a really lovely book to take your time over with the flaps and with all the details. And it's just so cosy. I think there's a part of a part of us that loves to just kind of be nosy into other people's homes. So looking at their little objects and just little simple things like, you know, where they make their cups of tea and where they sleep and where they sit and what activities they do, like the music. And um, it kind of shows their interests and you can imagine sort of um, how they spend their time when they're at home. Um, I just think this book is perfection. <laughs> so if you do track down any of these lovely books and you want to share your thoughts, just add it in the comments and let me know what you thought of them. And if you have any recommendations for books that you want to share, just add those in as well um, and share the bookish love together. Um, so yeah, I have loved this, um, this day of cosy, homely, kind of simple delights and I hope you've enjoyed it too. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and and like and share, comment and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.